Hey everybody, welcome to a, another Arcadia Music, Creative Musical Arts and Sciences CMAS podcast. My name is Richard Maxwell and it is Friday, uh, October 27th. Happy almost Halloween everybody. Another great episode today. We've got some ASU interns uh, here with us today in this segment. We've got some great conversations with some CMAS students. We've got a new music video uh, and a whole lot of other wonderful stuff. Um, check out our live stream concerts on YouTube as well as ArcadiaCMAS.com. Our weekly EPs come out uh, in our recording archives at ArcadiaCMAS.com and a whole bunch of other content created all by the amazing students here in the Arcadia High School CMAS program. Thank you so much for watching, tuning in, and supporting all these great students, and we hope you enjoy this episode. episode of very spooky, very, very spooky. And I have you know, some interest, you guys. Um, you guys are college students. So what are you guys being dressed up for Halloween this year? I am being Toadette from Mario Kart or Mario Universe. Uh, you watch uh, Daisy Jones and the Six? No, I've never heard of that. That's okay. Um, I'm dressing up as a couple characters uh, from Daisy Jones and the Six. That's nice. That's nice. Do you know the name of the man from Up? Yes. What's his name? I don't know his name. But, <laughs> but you you under you know the man so. Me and my girlfriend, we're going to be the little versions of him and Ellie. I forgot his name. Oh. Carl. Yeah, Carl and Ellie. So we're going to be dressed up. I'm going to have a little vest and glasses and then the, the hat with the aviator glasses. So that'll be fun. That is that is actually so sweet. <laughs> I was not expecting actually. that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So what sweet. What are you being, Charlie? Well, this year... It was supposed to be Princess Peach, but mm, oh my um, God. but this time <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I decided I was gonna be Raven from Teen Titans. Oh, nice. oh. that works. Yeah, um, love the costume, and I was like, I'm gonna pick this, and maybe next year I will do um, prin um, a uh, Princess Peach. Nice, definitely. Um, so what is your like previous like? Like Halloween experiences, like any stories or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my freshman year in high school, I dressed up as Wednesday Adams. Um, I had a really horrible wig, um, two braids. Um, and one day I was in class and I was being a little class clown, and I was laughing really hard. And I flipped my braid, and my wig flipped halfway. <laughs> Um, and then immediately after, my nose bled. Oh, no. um, so it was very scary. Trigger warning blood. Uh, yeah, never recovered from that. That's basically why I moved schools. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> wow. How did, how, did, how did that happen? You know what? It's a Halloween mystery. Yeah. Um, I was laughing all of a sudden. Pow. Pouring. Like the worst nose bleed I've ever had. You know, I had to pull the... And go straight to the bathroom, so... <laughs> That's that's that. <laughs> I I'm really glad you're okay. No, was it permanent damage or nothing like that? No, just regular nosebleed. Just a Halloween nosebleed. All right. <laughs> um, I was a big fan growing up of like making my own costumes. Um, and in the fifth grade, I really I went crazy. <laughs> I decided to be a like a a robot. So oh. I dressed up in oh. silver and I spray painted a bunch of boxes to like I had like a box over my head. I had a box over my torso, and I spray painted it on my driveway with like, like silver spray paint. Um, and there's still spray like spray paint there still, because I sprayed like right on the concrete. And my mom oh. got really mad at me, but it was oh cool. Man. Like I was like dressed like this, and I had a little slot um, for the candy. <laughs> so uh, that was probably my biggest. That was probably my biggest <laughs> Halloween experience. All right. Um, you definitely seem like the kid to actually do it. So <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> just spreading it on concrete. Um, Andrew, what, what do you do? Yeah, so um there was one year where I was really young and sort of with the um build your own costume thing, um, my parents um 
made my brother and I M and M's, and they cut out <laughs> huge, <laughs> like literally, the diameter was our height, of, <laughs> of like a huge M and M, and they put like uh, they cut out a little M and put it on, but it was literally c- like cardboard or s- or it wasn't. Cr- that's like um card stock something but it was colored card stock cut out in a huge circle with a big fat m on it and my brother and i wore it and we like there's ribbons as straps and that was probably really funny um for everyone else but we loved it we were like we're evidence and and then my parents wore it one year when we were older and it w- that was funny too oh uh, what color were you guys what i was red and he was the yellow one I have a question. What variety of M M&M? and M? The original, because it it had to Classic. be exactly because it was exactly circular. It was pretty pretty well cut. Um, so it was the original M M&M and M that the one that has a circular shape. Yeah. That was not on the bingo card list of costumes today. I <laughs> was not expecting you to be a big M M&M, and M. Yep. Huge. I, I'm <laughs> glad you guys like humongous <laughs> even. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I also have a story. So one time I really was big on like FNAF and everything, like Final hey. Fantasy. Mm-hmm. And so out. my mom couldn't get <laughs> any of our costumes in time. So she made us dressed in black and got us fi- Final Fantasy's mask and mm. just put them all over our heads. And um, and that was during the time where I was living in a very bipolar state where like nothing made sense. There's like upside down world at this point. And it started pouring raining on the, on Halloween because that's what it always does. It either rains or it gets very cold, get close to enough to snowing. Um, so every year, but this year was different. We It was pouring raining, and we stood in the rain to the candy factory because they had a bunch of candy, and everyone had umbrellas <laughs> and everything. And we, like, had ours. My mom even, like, made us go into the car, and she stood in line for us so she mm-hmm. could just stand out in the rain because she didn't want mm-hmm. us to get sick. Um, eventually we got our candies and we went back. People y- y- yelling and screaming at us because like we got like ho- like FNAF masks because it was so popular. Then like everyone was known for it. So yeah, I have some follow up questions. First, which character were you? Second of all, were you giving the jump scares? Uh, no, because I well the first question I was Foxy because I mm. love Foxy. Great. It's just a favorite character of mine. And secondly. No, because every time I tried, it wasn't working. And second, another one was like, I'm a really big scaredy cat, especially when it comes to like spiders, especially fake ones. I can't stand them and I get scared. I would intentionally not go to houses with really big fake spiders on them. Like intentionally. (laughs) Something to think about. No, um, with a story a few last week uh, I was at a boba shop and it was like I was in this Halloween theme and everything and I was at the the stand and everything and I didn't know there was like a fake spider right there because it did because I it didn't cross my mind my sister pointed it out I looked to my left and I freaked out I like jumped back mm-hmm. and I was like why would you do this like why would uh, you tell me this because yeah. that that hurts mm. but yeah I avoid houses with spiders on them Real or fake? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your guys' favorite candy? Ooh, I can go. I uh, I know I know <laughs> mine for sure. <laughs> it is always and forever will be Reese's peanut butter cups. Air. What? So allergic Nasty. To those. It's not <laughs> oh, okay. That's it's that's an excuse. But like, they're so. Like gooey and creamy, <laughs> while also being chocolatey, mm. and then they have a little bit of bite to them, and it's it's just the perfect combination of chocolate and goodness. It's it's my favorite. And sour patch kids. Okay, okay, that's that's a little normal. Um, a little oh, normal. Well, the sour patch kids, I can understand. Um, the Reese's was questionable at times, but you know, yeah. it's a candy. It's a candy. What is yours, Corbin? Um, I also really like Sour Patch Kids, but s- have you ever had the big Sour Patch Kids? Yes. Like the ones Yo. that come uh-huh. and they're like big. How I've big? How I've big? They're though? like three times as How big. Yeah. yeah. They're like little, little, little kids. Um. Anyways, <laughs> I really like those. <laughs> um. Jesse, what's, what's your favorite candy? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a little outlier. Anyone know Mr. Goodbar? Oh, I've I seen do. I've met but the guy. I like it. Oh, so, um, it's just a weird taste to me. Oh, so uh, I like <laughs> <laughs> I like Mr. Goodbar, or yeah. um, I could do a Kit Kat. That little okay. snap, it's okay. almost like a game and a candy in one. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about it. So yeah. <laughs> there we go. What's um, yours, Charlie? Um, I really like uh, Swedish Fish. Ooh. Yeah. I, it's, I have an actual addiction to them. Mm. Oh. And I think it, they're just really good to me. Um, I have a very controversial take on a swing candy. I know people might think that. Uh, what do you think about candy corn? I hate Ooh. it. I really like it. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, b- you know, in childhood I didn't like it, but I've come around to it. You know, do some candy corn. I've yet to try it since my childhood. Maybe my taste buds have changed. Just a little bit of <laughs> ch- chocolate <laughs> with what? the candy corn. It's like oh, you like chocolate like, uh, with it? It's like kind of like I don't know. Maybe like that'll help kinda mask kinda like the caramel, disgustingness. Like caramel and chocolate, but candy corn and chocolate. Candy that corn doesn't and sound good. I'll, I'll try it. it. I'll try sound it. Good. I, um, yeah. I have two mixed <laughs> reactions right now because like like it happened at the same time. You like candy corn with chocolate and caramel. I don't like candy corn by itself, but I feel like it needs to be like accentuated by another something. Another something. Mm. <laughs> That's <laughs> his take. That's my take. <laughs> mm. oh, all right. You what said you never had takes. some Andrew or have you? I so when I was a kid, I <laughs> tried it once, yeah. and I was like, "This tastes like stale gum." <laughs> and <clears throat> I never, I've never had it since because I was like, candy corn, no, thank you. And that's, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> I, I maybe my taste buds have changed. I know the texture of candy corn hasn't changed since my childhood, so maybe it's a texture thing. But Wait. yeah. Okay. That's that's fair. Do you like candy corn? I don't think we got your take on I, it. I do. I I actually do. What? I never understood like the staleness. <laughs> like, people are like, oh, it's so stale. I'm like, how? Like, you know, I feel like you're not tasting it correctly. Oh. Okay, what is it? What does it, it taste like sense. to you? I don't know. It just tastes like it just tastes like something, but I just know that <laughs> if I eat too much of it, I get sick and I throw up. That's all I know. Mm. It uh <laughs> it makes sense that you like candy corn because you like Swedish fish and they're almost both the same staleness so I, I don't know I'm mm. just saying it makes sense and that's it that's kind of um, that's very insensitive <laughs> oh <laughs> sue me Whoa. sue I'm, me I'm actually hold, hold on hold on I'm actually kind of hurt <laughs> um I'm just saying, like, I love a good Swedish fish, but you have an addiction to it. I can't eat maybe more than three without, like, it's weird in my teeth. And, like, I feel like I have 8,000 cavities all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. We are in the middle of recording. Oh, I thought you meant, are you doing it? Yeah, I just turned it on, didn't I? You just turned it off, maybe? No, you're good. You're good. We can cut this part. I'm going to teach him how. Oh my god. We have a broken leg right now. Okay. It's fine. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. Um I probably have to anyways. Um I actually have an addiction to candy in general. It's just mm. not like Swedish fish. It's an actual addiction. Have I done anything to solve it? Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. Um what does your dentist have to say about that? Um, my dentist say I need braces. Mm. Oh, not braces. Is that not the ortho or? No, no. Um, <laughs> my That's dentist say I need. <laughs> um, you. Uh, you know, it's just my front two teeth. That's fine. Um, but I can get a new one. So nothing. To That's about. interesting. I don't know if I'm rocking with Invisalign. I'm a braces girl through and through. Been through it. Yeah. You don't wear my retainer though. So. That, yeah, but like I feel like I do, that's gonna night. be in a way in my way of eating food because I like food, especially meat, and that's gonna be in my way of eating, and I don't like that. Yeah, it's tough at first because it's like you can have popcorn. They say you you're not supposed to have popcorn. You just gotta be really careful. I I like popcorn too, so I'm not gonna trust them on abrasives. I'm just gonna get a visit line and yeah, 
I'll, 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 I'll deal with the consequences later. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. Unless you guys have any other questions you have for me, um, S- as a Halloween person or like, you guys like Halloween? Mm. Personally, no, because I hate being scared. I also hate spiders, and um, I'm scared. So, oh, so you're kind of like me, like, but like, there's a difference. I like being scared to a degree because I can control it. Like roller coasters, love roller coasters. Mm. I, you know, I just like Halloween because every Halloween I like to watch The Nightmare Before Christmas because it like kind of melds like oh fall vibes and like holiday vibes. Mm. So that's kind of my favorite part about it. <laughs> But the scare stuff, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's okay. That seems very. I have a problem with Nightmare on Elm Street because I guess the concept is like, oh, it's scary, but it's like you can hundred percent beat him if you just don't sleep. I don't sleep, so like if mm. I'm a hundred percent gonna beat him, so I feel like mm. um that's a win for me and a zero for um like uh like the you know the movie franchise is like a. Mm-hmm. Justin, what do you have there? You know, I came into this wonderful set and I saw this book sitting on this little nightstand and it's called Dad Jokes, It's a Punderful Life. <laughs> Already the title, I'm loving it. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to share with you a little joke. See if you guys can get the sponge line. Pause if you're listening, see if you can figure it out for yourself. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What do you call a small mother? Um, I don't know, actually. I don't know. Andrew? I have no clue. Sorry. A minimum. Ah, that's so funny. That's all I got, folks. Funny. <laughs> Dang, that got you. Thank you. Ew. I did not come up with that, but I chose it. So in some oh. ways I did. It, it was just kind of... Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh god. Um today with this pack um Halloween episode, right? Mm. Great great day back, right? Great yeah. day. Um yeah. yeah, just great day back. Love to have you guys here again because um you guys are my favorite interns. Don't <gasps> tell anyone that. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Because you guys are like very, very sweet. You guys talk to us, you know, very, very nice, mm. interact with us, and you guys give us compliments. And <laughs> you know, you, you just guys are very nice people. Thank you're you. You're a nice that person means a as lot well. To us. <laughs> it, I know. He's gonna go cry. I, I am. He looks like <laughs> it, but his tears oh. are welling up. Wow. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you guys. Thank Say you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Everybody to another podcast episode. I'm your host, Lily True here. Um, today we're talking about Taylor Swift. Yay! Okay, respectfully, I don't think Jason and I know enough about Taylor Swift music to really talk about her for a whole segment. <sighs> I hate to be Fine. a downer. Okay, so I know we talked about this last time with Joe, one of the editors um, of the podcast from one of the few, the few like first episodes. Um, we actually just had a conversation about this uh, last time again as well. I was recording inspirational artists but specifically artists that you grew up with that like your parents played in the background while they were cleaning or how do you notice that like that has influenced your music taste now absolutely can i start of course yes. all right so the the two major artists that i would name are uh, pink floyd my father used to sing uh, the gnome and bike which are two of the tracks off of two of the tracks off of their uh, first album They're a very strange first album. It's actually very underrated. But my point is, I was introduced to Pink Floyd at a very young age. And then at around eight, uh, I got into Weird Al. And that pretty much shaped my entire worldview. If I didn't get into Weird Al, I highly, highly doubt I would be even into music at all. I think I wouldn't be into music at all if it weren't for the fact my aunt, kind of embarrassing, my aunt would like on her actual playlist would play Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. And I generally got into, like, like, yes, Disney music, but also, like, Broadway, which then led me to, like, oh, How to Sing, which then led me to other types of music. So, thank you, Disney. Isn't this, like, the third uh, the third segment in a row we've brought up the soundtrack to Mulan? Yes. I think it is. Because I always bring it up. 
I just wanted to thank you. Oh, it's only when I'm like with you guys for some reason. I've only ever mentioned it when I'm sitting with you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's because it, everyone says I look like Mulan. No one, one says no. that. No one does. No one does. No. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. What have you? What music did you grow up? Does that shape <coughs> like the music you like now? N- yes and no. Mm-hmm. So I, my mom plays a lot of R and B. Yes. Uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love R and B. Great <laughs> stuff. But I listen to more rap. Some emo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had, we've had a couple mic difficulties here recently. I didn't. I didn't. So you, I, didn't <laughs> I didn't see you pushing it towards me. I'm like, and you know, <laughs> Jason, what have you uh, recent? Have you noticed that music you listened to growing up might have affected oh you uh, now? Very much. Yes, my mom, uh, uh, like Cameron, listens to a lot of R and B and uh, like rap and hip hop mm-hmm. uh, from artists like. Uh, she listens to a lot of Kanye, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, when I like like wanted to start listening to some music, I don't know, that's the only best way I can put it. And to start listening to music, I kind of looked into those artists, sort of, and like kind of found some other artists that I liked in that same genre mm-hmm. that I started listening to a lot and I loved. And uh, now my mom hates that I listen to Eminem. <laughs> so. uh, does, doesn't all parents hate that you listen to Eminem? No. I mean, she, my mom wouldn't mind. My mom would find it. My mom would be cool with you. She, wow. uh, well, my mom, she doesn't like that I listen to him, but she doesn't do anything to, uh, to stop, stop you. Yeah. yeah. She just Music. Sort of oh, sorry. Uh, uh, sh- uh, she sort of, like, silently judges me when I uh, mention mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> me, personally, music that I grew up with consists... I need to fix these camera angles. Um, That's a little too close there. Um, Music that I grew up listening to was very pop, very R&B. Mm-hmm. Contrary to popular belief, I didn't like Taylor Swift when I was younger. I didn't. No one played it in my house. Whoa. Um, yeah, people. You know, we play. We played like 2000s party music in uh. my place. Is what we used to do. Like R B R and R R and B. Um, and a lot of pop was like, and occasional hip hop and rap. But yeah, we. That's what I listened to, and I think that. If you haven't listened to me talk on podcasts before, definitely has shaped my music taste now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me, um, me and Jason were talking about this the other day, and it seems like, I- and this is just for all genres of music, mm-hmm. it seems like they don't actually care about the music. They just care about making money. Like, you never, you never really... I understand that. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Not all the time, but I think I can definitely see where you're going. We talked about this in a past segment. The cash grab that is TikTok influencers yeah. making music. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah. It, if it's catchy enough to be like the chorus is catchy enough, yeah. all they care about is making like the chorus catchy enough. Yeah. And then or like the bridge going into the yeah. chorus. They so care about the 30 second two minute plane of TikTok that's just like five million. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think we actually said like those words verbatim like two weeks ago on an episode. Oh, yeah, we did. We had several TikTok uh, music segment segments. This is the reason a lot of songs are like one or two minutes long. Yeah. Than, like, music three or four. I mean, we've we've had an insanely short song since like the eighties. Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. the entire genre of grindcore. Oh, yeah. One second song. Have always been around, yeah, but more recently they're just having become like a, a more of a bigger yeah. thing. I think it's also because people's attention spans are that getting low. Oh, absolutely. Like, no, give me a longer song. My attention span. Here's is the it. thing. I I love long songs. I know, yeah. right? There's so much to analyze and to go into depth. Yeah. Seventeen minute song. They make time go by faster. Yeah, that's how time. Ten minute Taylor's version. All too well. You know, recorded at Long Pond Studios. I <laughs> I hate what TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels has done to our attention span. Because I now can't go five minutes without pulling out my phone and scrolling through Instagram. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. I think that's, that's a bit crazy. of an exaggeration. That's not real, though. That's a bit of an exaggeration Ask in your case, real, though. Uh, though. Ask Mr. Charles. Did no one get that pun? I did get the pun. Thank oh. you. Oh. Kind of real oh. yeah. <laughs> Okay. I actually do have one thing to say. I take serious issue with the with what you said across all genres, how it's uh, often about money. There are at least two genres I can think of off the top of my head where it's almost never about money, and those are metal and punk. Yeah, I was just yeah, saying I that agree. You know, as exaggeration. And also noise. Yeah, 
especially with today's mainstream stuff, I feel like you can't just go out for the money in those genres. That's like yeah. you have to really enjoy what you do yeah. and really enjoy what you're putting out there in order to exactly make money in general in those genres. I find um, I didn't mean to say. Well, I was gonna lead into the next thing. Which oh. I'm so sorry. So that's why I I hate listening to MTV. They have this new. They have a channel. And yes, TV's freaking sweet. Dude. I I do Ridic- used ridiculousness to be fan. No, okay, you no, see, no, no. we may be younger than the era of yeah, MTV yeah, on actual television airing music videos, but we all know MTV used to be great. Oh yeah, they they started doing this thing every Friday where like it's like an hour where they just play music. Now, it's something called like like Friday Night Jams or something. I don't know. I can't. They remember. stole our title. But like. <laughs> They they just play like music and I and I tried listening to it, I can't. It's it's the same like five songs they play on repeat. Really? Yeah. Well, MTV plays the same five songs. It's for an hour. it's kind of like kind of. But so like, like they they'll have different songs, but then like an hour later you already hear a song you already heard. Okay. Like five times from now. Oh my god. So like every like ten songs they'll play a Taylor Swift song, and then another ten. Uh, I don't know. Wait, they don't play new music. Song. They play. They play new music, but from, like, artists that, like, are mainstream. Like, classic oh, okay. artists, kind of. Like, y- if you wanted to, you can't, I, I've never heard, like, an artist. And they don't, they don't even do good artists anymore. Oh. Can we do, like, that a, Actually, that's sad. That's, it's that's sad. sad. I'm honestly, I know it's been decades, and I know I wasn't alive, but I'm <laughs> still very, very distraught by the fact they got rid of Headbangers Ball. That was, like, the best TV program ever. Oh, yeah. Because they would play, like, metal music videos all the time. It was great. I, like, speaking of what music is becoming now, even though we, how old is everyone, so I don't mess this up? Like 14. 14, 14, 14, 14 I'm 14. 15. 15. We're all 14 and 15. So, 50. <laughs> I heard you say 15. 14, we're Maxwell. all 14 and 15. So, when we look back years ago, that's a big difference in our minds mentally speaking. But even then, do you see a difference in how the music we try and listen to versus what we used to listen to is? I mean, I'm not talking about B I N G O. I'm talking about like <laughs> that banger. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm talking. To I'm talking about like just if we were to go back and try and find music we like that fits our criteria now, it, we would find so much better music than we would now. Like yeah. the music, the way music is being produced now. I think it's just ignore the timer. It's it's just someone elaborate on what I'm trying to say. It's <laughs> it sucks. I don't want to say it sucks. I'm just to be more specific, it's a bit mundane, yeah. repetitive. Yeah, it's music is like obviously we can all agree we're all on CMS. Music is a yeah. big part of our lives. Yes. It is in our lives every single day for an hour, even if you don't listen to music, if you take this class. Yeah. And I think us making music finds a way for, like, even though I'm a producer, so I don't really make music, we build an appreciation for how it is made, and so then we understand when everyone starts hating on a song, well, like, yeah, but this, but then at the same time, you're also like, I get where they're coming from, is another thing, because, once again, the cash grab that is the influencer reverting to music. Don't get me wrong, okay? I know people like Drake. Mm Mm-hmm. I can't listen to his music because I feel like it's all the same thing. I feel like I, Drake. Is it's it's him actually, trying to rap. <laughs> it's but no, I don't trying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. No matter how, bro. Yeah, I don't. I don't like him that much. Like, he'll be like, oh, "Girl, okay. you said that you loved me, <laughs> but now you don't, don't." Zoom in on the cabinet. What? What? <laughs> what? Uh, Nico, you seem like the type of person that would say you don't like Drake, but then you you do <laughs> behind closed doors. I like one Drake song. That's one too many. Is it God's, I agree. Is it God's plan? No, it's Hotline Bling. Oh, don't get me wrong. Hotline Bling's classic. I don't really like oh. it that much, but like, man. You exactly. have an appreciation. It's the last thing in like 2015. Yeah. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. But you know what else is a vibe? Emo music. Oh. Uh. <laughs> you guys don't like emo music? I mean. I don't not like it. Closest thing I like is what? Green Day. Green Day isn't emo though. They aren't, but they border on it occasionally. Sometimes making sad songs. Is I said occasionally. <laughs> occasionally. You can't make a song about your feelings and call it emo. Yeah, nobody said that. That's what you said. You're putting words in his mouth, dude. <laughs> I can always. Um, he 
does that to me all the time. <coughs> but I don't. You know, besides this little argument on the fly here, um, it's not really an argument. I'm just gonna keep talking. Like I know. Really okay. Um, and <laughs> I give you death glares like every episode. I don't mean anything by <laughs> like, it. Like i every single time he's here, I'm always like, "What did I do?" <laughs> I just look at people with a with a death glare for no reason at all. I don't mean anything by it. I swear. Even if you don't mean it to be part of your life every day, it's a big. It is a big part of your life, and I think it really like it influences you. And I think we can agree that the music that you grew up wi- with, if you're really into music now, definitely shaped who you are in like that kind of way. And I know you said what were your artists again, everybody? Pink Floyd and Weird Al. Pink and Rihanna and Beyonce. If you're out there, if you see this. Hit I us want up. you to know I love you. Love a call. We can sponsor you. Don't look through and that. And um, <laughs> <laughs> this has been a really cynical episode, though. It's all been about like how so much music is made for money, and not about can the actual we, art. Talk, let's let's lighten up the mood. Let's lighten, yeah. up, let's the lighten mood. up the mood in the last yeah. little couple minutes. Okay. Uh, what is the funniest song? The funniest song? Yes. Not Skibbity Toilet. I can tell you <laughs> that. Oh my god. <laughs> You're gonna hate me for this, but I'm gonna say it. Is it's Utopia Animal? <laughs> no, it's the Annoying Orange Friday parody. <laughs> it is pretty that funny. Is the greatest yeah, song of all that time. That is. Any Annoying Orange song is the best. No. Wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Name a bad Annoying Orange song. Oh, wait, I can't everyone? Can't. <laughs> I, I can't even. They're any. they're know. they're all bad, but they're all also pretty funny. Yeah. Like they're ironically. Made ironically, yeah. that's what makes them good. Uh, I don't they're know if they're good, made. Good. I don't know if they're made ironically, but they're enjoyed ironically. They're made for yeah. children, okay? I think yeah, definitely. Probably are. Being for children doesn't necessarily mean you have to water it down to like the most basic. Talk in the mic, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Making stuff for children doesn't mean you have to water it down to like the most basic, like friendly thing ever. Yeah. The annoying orange. Uh, the reason they make music. This is my theory. The reason they make music is to capitalize. Off of people like that guy. We <laughs> <laughs> watched the video. Like, oh man, this is so funny. That, that, that's who they're made for. <laughs> that's so true. Oh my, that reminds me of. Um, have you seen Jim Carrey rap into Ice Ice Baby? No, thankfully. Ice Baby. Oh, it's he's making he makes fun of like uh, Vanilla Ice. Okay, good. How he like can't tie his, sh- his shoe for some reason. How his name is Robert Van Winkle and how he's capitalizing on a market that's rapidly rising. Okay, um, I want to yeah. say, the first time I heard that Vanilla Ice's real name was Rob Van Winkle, I literally Wait, could not his stop. Wait, his name is Ron? That's his Rob. Robert Van Winkle. Robert Van Winkle, was that's his real name. When I first heard that, I could not stop laughing okay. for ten minutes. And he's a gangster rapper. He can't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, okay. he is. Have you not heard the lyrics to Ice Ice Baby? I haven't listened to that I song in so I've long. I have listened to Ice Ice Baby since I was it like... Is Seven. <laughs> All right. Getting back on topic, funniest song ever is probably Albuquerque by Weird Al, oh. in my opinion, because it's just so good. Well, you forgot White and Nerdy. Good choice. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'm sorry. I have to yeah. go. But <laughs> Go skedaddle. A little bit. Um, But thank you for joining me. Like, I genuinely think this was a good topic of, like, we talked about music that influenced us, which is really important in our lives, and especially as some of you who are artists in this program. We talked about how music can be seen as a cash grab nowadays, and instead of something that people can use as, like... Mm. As who is calling? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Phones are silenced in the recording I d- I don't, studio. I, d- <laughs> I, I apologize. I'm but thank you so much for, thank you for letting me host, and yeah. thank you guys for watching. Goodbye. Bye, guys. A reoccurring character. Um, yeah, you are. Wave your hand. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another podcast episode. It is episode 11. And as far as I'm aware, your prompt is... Kurt Cobain. Or the <laughs> influential people in music or people yeah. who take inspiration from. Um, you see, I'm a producer, so my... People I take inspiration from for my music doesn't really exist because I don't make music. Wow. But 
both of you, who are some artists that you really like? Who who did you grow up with is another good one. Who did, like, who who did you listen to growing up that really shaped you? Um, Erica, do you want to start? Sure. Um, growing up, I, li- I, um, I listened to a bunch of Spanish music. So mostly that would be, like, Natalia Jimenez, who would, um, who would, who, I can't speak right now. Anyways, <laughs> like I was saying, she she would always hit h- super high notes. <laughs> <laughs> and in all honesty, most of her songs were, were about femininity mm-hmm. and about, like, feminine culture and just, like, power of women. Nice. Okay, this thing, I need to readjust the camera angles Where here. is it? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess like keep going, keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I guess like um a lot of like musical I don't know, like artists I listened to when I was younger, like my mom would play a lot of like like eighties, nineties R and B and stuff. R and B for life. Yes. And um yeah, so she would play like a lot of like um Whitney Houston, Janet Jackson, nice. um Destiny's Child and Amazing. stuff. Amazing. I know. And, <laughs> and then I don't know, recently like how I said earlier Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> I just went into that phase where it's like, yeah. Yeah, rock and roll. And it's just like, uh I don't know. I just my whole perspective of it kind of changed. Like I just had like more open windows of like what else there was yeah, I guess yeah be? because like a couple of months ago like last summer I went to uh like a Janet Jackson and Ludacris concert with my mm-hmm. mom and it's probably like one of her last runs because she's getting kind of like older yeah yeah so like um yeah so like that and like a bunch of other artists um I don't know. I guess I'm not really like connected to like R and B like I like the older stuff was because I don't know. Today's stuff just kinda like it's not the I feel same. Like there's not enough R and B artists anymore. Yeah. And, which yeah. isn't to say that there aren't R and B artists. I just feel like what in the <laughs> Oh my god. I will adjust these. Question. Um well no, because R R and B I just personally feel like whenever you see like a song go trending, I feel like it's not R and B. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I I am a pop girly. I'll admit that I'm a pop girly, but yeah. I'm an R&B girly, and I and I want more. <laughs> like hip hop and like Doja Cat and stuff, maybe. Uh, like Doja Cat like just Doja got Doja like, Doja. yeah. Question: um, Like, mm-hmm. when you were younger, would you always like hate everything that your like parents put on? But no, like, I now, love that. Now my parents play Brianna. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> no, I used to absolutely hate anything that my parents put on what they put on uh like mostly in spanish we me and my sisters would always be complaining trying to change it on the radio um but now all, that's all i actually listen to now i I'll, I'll play a lot wider variety now i i can see that how like you're like oh mom and dad why are you playing this so much but i was like but now you like it because you grew up with it and yep. it just kind of that 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 happens um i have mentioned her before and i will continue to mention her pink Please notice me. <laughs> I love Pink. I love Pink. I really do. She's she's an amazing songwriter. Um, she's a feminist. She I think she's an absolute wonderful artist that um that is just awesome and I'm glad I got to grow up listening to her music. Favorite song? Don't let me get me from mis Don't let me get me from misunderstood from Funhouse. Probably Funhouse. And Beautiful Trauma. I skipped one. Truth About Love. Truth About Love is my favorite album. I can't pick a favorite song out of Truth About Love. And even if I did, I'd, I I don't know what that one would be. What about favorite song in, like, general? Favorite song in general? I'm yeah. sorry. There's too much to decipher. For That's a good point. One. For real, though, actually. I mean, yeah. I change it all the time to whatever I'm listening to on repeat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I, well, I listen to it so much that I just don't end up liking it. <laughs> mm, that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Um... So, like I said, we grew up with the type of music we just talked about. What are, what what you're currently listening to now, is that, like, because both of you are artists, if I'm correct, both of you are yeah. vocalists, mm-hmm. um, is that, like, the music you're listening to now, and even the listen, even the music you used to listen to, does that contribute to the music you're making, personally? Um, Hold on, wait. 
Oh my gosh. Just the ghost no, sitting right I'm here. Like, Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, Casper. <laughs> okay. So, like, I would say, because, like, my most recent piece of, like, you heard it earlier. Yeah, I did. It wasn't that great. But, like, I guess it could have been, like, more potential. coordinated. There was potential for yeah, it. Yeah, but it kind of fell, like, under, like, grunge. Like, kind of, like, Nirvana. I don't know. I'm going through a whole yeah. Kurt Cobain phase. I'm sorry. It's know. just. I feel like the song you created, I think it's getting there. I just feel like some of the beat was a bit out of sync. But yeah, it's definitely that's definitely true. There. We we kind of just, like, like I kind of just, like, threw it together. Okay. Because one day my partner wasn't there, and it was oh. just kind of, like all over the place and like we couldn't get well i couldn't get like the um the way the mic sounded right and then i think i changed up like the filter on the guitar and it was just a whole like it definitely could have been a a little less like a lot less sloppy but um yeah i want to re-record it and like see how it sounds then yeah so like well i mean that's what happens when you play it out loud you get feedback and you, then you just try again yeah you just improve it that's but we had it. such a short uh like yeah, um, we had a very timeline short time time too for this project yeah and i'm just glad that i came up with something like beforehand because like like the last couple of projects i just kind of like made up the idea like mm-hmm. as we were going but this one i actually like had a plan for it mm-hmm. so that was a lot better i i like i guess with like the artists i'm listening to i I'm, like, kind of holding myself to an expectation of what I want to do. But, obviously, I'm not going to ever get there. Not yet. Anyway. Don't say you'll never get there. Yeah. I'm just saying. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I won't get there yet. Um, but, like, I'm now experimenting with um, how different sounding things sounds sounds different, but, like, in yeah. a good way. So you're, so you're just experimenting with your music style right now. Yeah. Like, you don't have a defined one. And I think that's a great part of being CMS1 and just yeah. CMS entirely. You get to make your own music to what is you and what you like. And if you, that ends up changing, guess what? You can change it without having a lot of backlash on it. Because that's what? It's your music in the end. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like... I know I talk about Taylor Swift a lot, okay? It's like but, what Maxwell said about yeah, it. Yeah, like, it's like she changed genres and people got so mad at her. But in the end, I personally feel like when you're making your own music, if you don't do what you need to do to make it from you and not what other people want it to be, it's just going to decline. People aren't going to like your music because it may not even real. they may not even realize it, but subconsciously they can feel this isn't them. Mm-hmm. I definitely think that that's one of the better parts of this project. You get to make your music designed to you, and then if you change, then guess what? So does your music change, and that's If you feel time. like it, basically. If you feel like it, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what are we going to talk about next? That's, that's a good question. Who's your favorite band? <laughs> Who's your favorite? Actually, yeah. We're talking that's a about good question. Who we inspiration from. Go ahead, bands. Um, I don't listen to that many bands. Same. If I, if I have to choose. No, actually, uh, Lovejoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like girl groups. <laughs> God, I have like f- God, I have like five. That's the crazy thing. Like, I would say, like, there isn't even like a top. Like, I like mm, Metallica, mm-hmm. Nirvana, mm-hmm. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, mm-hmm. um, Arctic Monkeys, and yes, yeah, <laughs> and. There was, like, another one. Oh, Foo Fighters. Yeah, oh, Foo Fighters. Yeah. For sure. Um, me, the only band I really listened to is when I had a, had a, it was a time in my life. I listened to, okay, people got confused when I said this, because in one podcast, I said I didn't really listen to them, and then another podcast episode, I said I listened to them a whole bunch. What I meant was I listened to them more than an average person would be like, mm. but I wasn't exactly, like, a stan. I was a fan. My Chemical Romance. Okay. <laughs> That was that'd be like I the like only band song. I think yeah. I've really listened to like that's a band band and not like a boy group like One Direction, Big Time Rush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me, and I'm really glad I got to know you guys better of what your artists and how that has shaped you and what we grew up with. And I think music's a really important part of that. I think that we could build upon that at like a later episode of how music can shape a person of what they grew up with. That can definitely. So thank you from Lily, Erica and Kalena. Yeah. Bye. Bye.
Thank mm-hmm. you.